Well, good evening. Um, this is our, well, many of uh, um, webinar. I don't know that I haven't counted it. Um, tonight we have as our guest, Robin Charbit. He's the CEO of Insight Principles in uh, the States. Um, and he began his career as a chemical engineer with Exxon in 1981. Having received an education at Sheffield University in the UK and eventually led one of Exxon's international plastics businesses. He joined Arthur, Arthur D. D. Little in 1992, first in Europe and ultimately in Boston, where he led and managed the North American chemicals practice. With a colleague, he left the more classical consulting world and founded Insight Management Partners to bring an understanding of how the mind works into business. He then met Ken Manning, and they joined forces, forces to create Insight Principles. Robin was born in the UK to French parents and met his Belgian wife, Sabine, in Switzerland. They now live in Boston. When time permits, Robin enjoys all things mechanical, cars, woodworking, home projects, and is an avid similar sim Phil. And he's a proud granddad too, too. <laughs> That's good to hear. Robin, may I give you the floor? This, explain a little bit how you got involved into the principles and, um, and, and, and what, what you do today with them. Sure. Uh, well, thank, first of all, thanks to the three of you for inviting me. Um, it's, always, it's always a pleasure. Uh, so I'm an engineer. Um, always like to play with Legos and take things apart. So I've inherently been interested in how things work. And when I got into the world of uh, consulting, I would often be in meetings with very, very senior clients, much more senior than if I was an employee. And I would notice that uh, these very, very brilliant and wise people would every now and then either do or say something which wasn't very intelligent. And it surprised me because they were the CEO, they were the head of a business. And as I reflected, I noticed sometimes I did too. You know, sometimes I could write an email and it would be like that. And other times I would spend half an hour and it would still be a bad email. Or, you know, I'd spend half an hour, you know, looking for my glasses until someone <laughs> pointed out the door on my head. So I, I noticed that IQ, our intellectual ability varied. And I, since I was an engineer, I came up with what you would call a normal distribution or histogram. And the mean, the, the high point is what you would measure on at a test. But at any point in time, you're either ahead or behind. And in the world of sports or the world of, of business, you know, if you were ahead, you were, you were in flow, you were in the zone. And if you were at the other end, you were what they call out to lunch, which is, you know, <laughs> armed and dangerous. Well, I noticed that everybody had that fl fluctuation. But apart from a bad cold, too much alcohol, or not enough sleep, no one could explain to me what caused that variability. Now, by then, I was a um, management consultant, so I looked in all of the management literature, and I could find nothing to explain that variability. And with a colleague, we were sort of wondering about this, because we'd been with teams that had been at the performance end, that had no time, no resources, and they'd done something dramatically brilliant to, to the point that they would years later still talk about it. Remember that time when we saved the business? Remember that time when we solved the problem? You know, And I'd also been at the other end of the spectrum with teams of brilliantly educated people with all the time and all the resources, and they had trouble ordering lunch. So it looked to me like the world didn't need another process, another system. It needed to figure out how to get people from here to here. And with this colleague, we looked and we came across Sid Banks. And at that point, this is uh, early, uh, end, of the, end of the century, so early 2000s. And we found this understanding of Sid in the, in the world of psychology, because pretty much that's where the people who had uncovered Sid and it was being used in drug rehab, in prisons and police forces, but not in the world of business. And we learned a bit and realized this explained the variability. When you get caught up in your mind and when you get all confused, you tend to go that way. 
when you let go, when your mind gets clear, when there's nothing disturbing you psychologically, you're over here, you're brilliant. So we left, left the big consulting company and decided to bring this understanding to the world of business because we figured it was the next frontier. You know, we, the world did not need another strategy process, another visioning process, another restructuring process. But if we could get more people over there, that would make a difference. And we, we ran a few trials and it worked. So, um, you know, a little bit of knowledge is a dangerous thing. So, you know, we launched into, we set up our own company, quit the big consulting company, but we didn't know very much. And um, very much like many people in the world of the principles, because we had been touched by what we had learned, we figured everybody else would want to hear about it. Well, guess how many people in the world of business want to know about their mind? So we would go and, I, you know, I, I had these clients from my previous life and they would say, oh, what are you doing? Come and speak to me. I, I like you, Robin. So I'd go into the office of a CEO and the office would be, you know, $5 million worth of art on the walls. I mean, this, this, was, this guy was, you know, had done very well. And he said, so what do you do? I said, well, I can help you think better. And he would sit back and he'd look at his office and then look at me and go, my thinking's pretty good. So the meeting was very short. So we figured out that, you know, going and telling people that they should learn this was a, was a uh, in English we say, a fool's errand. You know, you're not going to get anywhere. Because in the world of therapy, you're depressed, you're unhappy, you have some anxiety. Well, then, so you go to a therapist and you're intrinsically motivated. In the world of business, you know, you say you've got a lot of stress, but yeah, I've got a thousand people working for me and the board wants them, you know, to fire me. Well, that's why I have this stress. So what's the mind got to do with it? So what we do to your second question, Sue, is we found a way to bring this to the world of business that makes it interesting for business. And the metaphor is the way you bring, uh, you, the way you give a pill to a dog. Do you know how you give a pill to a dog? Bacon, apparently, is pretty good. Steak. <laughs> yeah, bacon is wonderful. Yeah. <laughs> So you wrap the pill in something the dog likes to eat. So we figured out that's how we should approach the world of business. So we would go into a company and say, what's keeping you up at night? What's the problem? And they would say, well, sales are too low. We can't get the sales up. And you know, if you don't get the sales up, we're going to lose our funding from the corporation, you know, from the parent company. And then we'd talk with them and we'd find out that the team is arguing a lot and getting overwhelmed. And so it's pretty clear that if they could all learn to settle down psychologically, they'd have insights and they'd fix their problem. But they don't, you know, going in saying you need to learn the principles is not going to work. So we would say, look, we think we can help you solve your problem. And there's a little thing you need to learn which helps you out. And they say, what's that little thing? Now, before we explain it, we'd ask the person, what do you know about your mind? And depending what they told us, we would then make a bridge to what we would show them so that they could then see how it would fix the problem. And in some cases, the bridge was easy. I remember one client, I asked him about my mind, his, you know, what did he know about his inner life? And he says, quite a lot. And I said, what do you mean? He said, well, my wife died five years ago and I saw that if I was gentle with my thinking, it would go better and I didn't try and push and get over it. I just left my mind alone and I trusted my mind would heal itself and it has. So I'm thinking, good awareness. And I say to him, well, what's, what's it like at work? You know, what's, what's your state of mind like at work? He said, oh, it's a nightmare. I get into my car, I get to the office and it's bang, 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 bang. And the next thing I know it's six o'clock and I've done nothing and I'm worn out. So I said to him, what would it look like if you had the state of mind you have at home, if you had that at work? And you see him sort of map. And he goes, that would be brilliant. I said, well, that's what we do. And he says, I see if we taught this to the team and they could settle down, we'd fix the problem. Great, when do we start? So what we do is we find out what they want to get done. We listen long enough to see how the principles might help because sometimes they don't. Sometimes the guy needs a good tax attorney or, you know, he needs to get a different loan structure from his bank, you know. Um, but most of the problems in business are people related, are thinking related. 
And then we have to speak to the leader so that we can help build a bridge so he, so he or she understands what we're going to do. And sometimes like this guy, it's easy. And sometimes the guy says, what do you mean inner life? What inner life? And in those cases, the explanation takes a bit more time and you have to start a bit more basic. So we go in allegedly to help them solve a problem. They solve the problem. Uh, we've done it so often, we give a money back guarantee. If you don't get the problem solved, don't pay us. So the client has a problem they need to solve. They've tried to solve it, they can't. And we offer to help them solve it or they don't pay. I mean, who wouldn't take that deal? Now, they always solve the problem because when they quieten down, you know, we do two days on the principles and two days on the business problem. And they solve the problem and they're thrilled. But then they come to us and say, hey, this wasn't about the business problem. This is about my humanity. We go, yeah. And they say, why didn't you tell me? And we say, you wouldn't have been interested. <laughs> so we, we have to sort of... Um, help them see what's on offer. Hi, Natalie. Hello. Queen Avant, as I should say. Uh, uh, so, so that's what we do. We, we go into companies who have no interest in their mind. We find out something they need help with, and we help them by having them learn the principles. And at the end, they understand the principles, and they have the solution to their problem. And then they like it so much, they say, you should go here, here, and here. So we do no marketing at all. We've never done any marketing. And we always have more work than we need. So it's a, and, they, and by the way, and they pay us money. So I mean, it's, so we, we're very lucky. We get to share something that has made a big difference for us. We get to see it, help people get done what they want to get done. Then there's all the collateral benefit of them learning it for themselves in their lives and their families. And then they and then they tell other people. So it's a it's a really it's a blessing to have this job. Yeah, I can imagine. And it, it is absolutely because if you see what it does for people, it's it's amazing, really. Yeah. Yeah, and it, a little bit goes a long way. They don't, you know, when I first learned the principles or first came across the principles, you know, you had to do an intensive and unless you had, you know, multiple intensives, you couldn't really, you know, it wasn't going to have much impact. Well, I've seen have people have impact in hours. Mm -hmm. Now it's a, what they call in mathematics, a Pareto curve. You know, it starts out like some people, a few hours works, but some people they need the four days because otherwise they don't get there. And then we do a lot of follow-up after our programs. Because even after four days, some people, it's still a bit intellectual. It's still, yeah, but. But it's amazing how some people, they don't need much. Yeah, that's so true. Absolutely. I know. I, I know from, from firsthand, I had a, a lady who had panic attacks. And I went through this program with her five, five conversations. And afterwards, she told me, you know, after our first conversation, before we started the trajectory, I already stopped having panic attacks. <laughs> and we hadn't even discussed the, the principles now. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah. And that's and that's that's and sometimes you have people who stay there for years and, and still don't get it. Well, and what's fabulous is you you see how people can then go on and teach. We mm -hmm. we had a um a client, we do a lot of follow-up, as I said, and I had a client. Um, and we were doing our regular check-in. He said, oh, I can't, can't wait to tell you what happened last weekend. And I said, what happened? He said, well, my 16-year-old daughter is learning to drive. In America, you learn, you know, very young. And he said, unfortunately, her first driving lesson, she pulls out of the parking lot and she hits another car. I mean, she's barely started her driving lesson. She has an accident. She comes home. She's crying. She's crying. She's going to prison. She's pretty sure she's going to prison. <laughs> oh, God. Now, he said, given what I'd learned with you guys, I could see the problem was not an accident problem. It was a thinking problem. But I could also see telling her, no, no, it's fine. Because she really believed she was going to prison. So he said, I had to sit down and I put my arm around her and she's sobbing. You know, they, I don't know how you say that in Dutch, but she's... <laughs> um, and he says, he says, okay, so, you know, maybe going to prison. Well, what else could be happening? 
What do you mean, Dad? Well, that's one scenario. What else? She says, I don't know. He says, well, think about it. Now, here's what's good about the human mind. When you ask people to think about something, something comes up. And maybe it's better than what they had before. So she goes, uh, I don't know, maybe there's a $5,000 fine and I'm never allowed to drive, but I don't go to prison. He said, okay, so maybe you go to prison, maybe there's a big fine and you never drive. What else? She goes, uh, uh, well, maybe there's a small fine and maybe it's six months of I'm not allowed to drive. And then I have to redo my learning test before they let me learn. Said, okay, what else? She says, oh, I, I don't know. He said, don't oh, think, think. She goes, um, uh, well, maybe this happens all the time and they have insurance. And next lesson, I just sit in the back and I don't drive. I just watch someone driving so I get comfortable being in a car again. Okay. So he said, look, you've given me four or five scenarios. Which one's going to happen? And she says, I don't know. He says, no, what, what, what do you think? She says, dad, I mean, the scenario that's going to happen depends on how you think about it. And he said... <laughs> Exactly. And she looks at him, gets up, gives him a big hug. Thanks, Dad. She goes off. She's fine. Wonderful. Now, no, wait, this is, there's a cherry on the cake. Mm. So he's like, <laughs> look at my skills, you know. <laughs> now, what he tells me is that he's been having a problem with his credit card company, that there was a charge on his bill. He called them up. They said, oh, sorry, it's a mistake. Don't pay it. His bill comes. He doesn't pay it. The next bill comes, there's now an interest charge because he didn't pay the full bill. So he calls them up and said, you told me not to pay it. Now there's, he said, hey, sorry, sorry, listen, forget the charge, forget the interest bill, the interest, just pay the normal thing. Anyway, the next bill comes, there's now interest on the interest. And so he's, he's upset with these. Later on that day, the credit card bill comes. Again, the problem's still there. So he's getting all upset, those guys. And his daughter, the one who had the car accident, she looks at him and says, Dad, has your thinking got anything to do with your upset? And he's like, I thought I was good. She, she just had one. <laughs> oh, wonderful. <laughs> wonderful, yeah. But, but it's, it's amazing how quickly children pick this up. It's amazing. I, I, I had a situation with uh, a young man um, a few years back. And he was running around with a psychologist and it didn't help him very much. And so I said, well, let's go, go for a walk. So we went for a walk. And then three hours later, we had an extensive walk. And three hours later, he was quite okay. Everything was, was fine. He said, I don't need new psychologist anymore. It's, it's fine. And it's, I, I, don't, I don't really know what happened. But it's amazing how quickly they picked it up. Yeah. I mean, I, 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 had a, I did a program in May. We always do a year of follow-up. And the follow-up is voluntary. Some people are like, four days, thank you. That was plenty. More than I ever wanted to know about my mind. And then other people do a lot of follow-up. But we always insist on at least one, one call. And the call is, how did it go? Any feedback? And there's one guy who basically was not answering any of my emails. So I you know, respectfully sent two or three, and after the third no reply, I contacted his assistant, said, maybe I'm going into spam or junk or something. She said, okay, I'll forward your message. And then she replied, yeah, he got your message, he'll call you, nothing. I wait and I wait and I, and I keep wondering why he maybe didn't like the course, you know. He seemed to like the course, he, I mean, but you know, maybe he was faking it. You know. I finally spoke to him. So this program was beginning of May and I finally spoke to him um, uh, a week ago. So it's taken five months. Mm -hmm. What happened is a day after our program ended, there was a massive explosion in the company at one of wow. our facilities. Wow. And he is one of the most skilled people at investigating incidents and so literally he dropped everything and he's been down there 24 7 since it happened because it's a production facility they have in many places around the world and they don't understand why it blew up so there was some reaction that happened that no one understands and so mm -hmm. the investigation is very complex and urgent so basically he has 2,000 emails in his e e inbox that he hasn't touched yeah 
So I, you know, I, when I finally get hold of him, I said, well, you know, it's a long time ago, but you know, how was the program? Oh, I love the program. Oh, really? What did you get out of it? He said, well, uh, you teach us about this capacity for the mind to have new thinking. And we do a lovely exercise where we get people to wonder and have insights. It's a remarkable exercise. It really shows people the intelligence flowing through the mind. Mm -hmm. He said, well, as soon as I was sitting in the investigation meetings, I could see everybody overthinking everything. And everybody kept going to what they knew, except we don't know what happened. So going to what we knew wasn't going to solve the problem. So he said, I taught them what you taught me. And within a month, we solved the problem. Amazing. And I said, well, great. He said, oh, that's not it. He said, you know, I'm still down there and it's in the middle of nowhere. And so I, every night I go back to the hotel with my, I've got one colleague and there's nothing to do at the hotel because it's in the middle of nowhere. And the colleague is a younger person who's going to take my job when I retire. Technically he's brilliant, but he's no good at running investigations. He's no good at interacting with people. He always jumps to conclusions and really people are worried whether he's going to be able to do my job. And since I'm his mentor, it's my, my responsibility. So he said, since we have it, had every evening free, every evening after dinner, I drag him up to my room and I taught him the principles. <laughs> and the guy's now doing great. Everybody wants to promote him. So I'm thrilled with the program. Oh, and by the way, I can sleep through the night now because before, I couldn't, before your program, I couldn't sleep through the night. Wonderful. He didn't need follow-up. He was no, fine. He was fine. Absolutely. So it's a real um, honor and a blessing to take understanding to people who would not be interested. Yeah. Have them become interested and then see their lives change and then it ripple out to everybody that they know. Yeah. Yeah, that's what's happened. That's what's happening in my practice right now. People are talking about this and, and it's, it's, it's like a, a ink, ink dot. Yeah, yeah. It's wonderful because I get very strange requests now, now and then. Yeah, people with anger problems and so on. <laughs> yeah, we, we we target the world of business because we think change in the, on the planet is going to come through business. Yeah, absolutely. Governments um, are not doing a very good job at change. No, no, not not only not not only the the government not, but also the companies in, themselves not. Um, I, I left, uh, I, I've been a management consultant too for over 20 years. And um, I was fed up with the way we did change at the company I worked for. Yeah. And I tried to change it all the time, but nobody would listen. Nobody would, would want something different. And I just quit and I said, okay, let's see how we can really change this. And, and this works every time. Yeah, we, I don't know if you've ever seen, there's a hierarchy that you can draw people to describe change. Mm -hmm. So if you imagine, you know, uh, um, I've actually got a, can you guys see my flip chart? Yeah, wonderful. Um, if you look at results, where do results come from? Basically, the actions. Yeah, absolutely. Actions or behaviors. Yeah. So if I take intelligent actions, I get intelligent results. If I take stupid actions, I get bad results. Yeah. Now, where do actions and behaviors come from in the moment? I'm thinking. Well, imagine you don't understand the principles. Okay. On a more basic level, where, why do people do what they do in each moment? Yeah, the feelings. Yeah. Yeah. If I'm feeling kind, how do I behave? If I'm feeling upset, how do I behave? If I'm feeling open-minded, how do I behave? Now, you answered the question already, but where do feelings come from? Well, I would say it comes from the content. Of your thinking, yeah, absolutely. Of your thinking. Yeah. Absolutely. Which is, you know, you, call, you could call it... Um, you could call it sort of what. Yeah. What you think determines what you feel, because that's one and the same thing, right? Yeah, two sides of a coin. And then, you know, the next thing is, well, where does 
the content of your thinking come from? Well, it comes from what we call in English your programming. Yeah. Or your mindset. Which is why you think what you think. So, for example, I'm a chemical engineer, French parents. I don't think about knitting. I don't think about Indonesia. You know, since I have a granddaughter in Amsterdam, I think about Amsterdam a lot more than I used to. So the way we've been programmed as we've gone through life, and this is the result of millions of thoughts that we have made up about life, mm -hmm. that determines what we think about. That's the now, memory. Well, it's, it's memory, it's conditioning, it's our mindset. Yeah. Like, you know, there was a mindset or a paradigm mindset, you know, hundreds of years ago, the world was flat. Mm -hmm. That's just programming. It wasn't really flat, but it's what people believed. And it caused them to think a particular way, like they would never sail very far from land. Boats would have very big anchors and they would always have someone in the top of the mast to see, see the edge of the world. Yeah. So the programming determines what you think about. And so the last thing is you say, well, where does, where does programming and mindset come from? And this is where the principles. Mm -hmm. Well, we call that the, the, the mechanics. So if this is what you think and this is why you think it, this is how. Now, let me just adjust my camera so you can see the bottom there. Now, if you look at this, guess where most companies try and make change happen? Yeah, the actions. Yeah. Now, some try and be a bit more sophisticated and they tell people what to think. But it doesn't work. You know, someone's upset and you tell them to calm down. They don't calm down. So what we've explained to companies is that if you teach people this, it because it, it's the thing that caused the programming to get formed in the first place, it allows the programming to change. Yeah. And so when people learn this, this changes much more easily. And then all of this changes. And right, it's so. a lot quicker. Yeah, and by itself. Yeah. I mean, I'll give you a, an example. We were called into a site, um, 7,000 people on the site. It's a, like, a, like a village, like a town. Mm -hmm. And this company was very progressive. They hired 50% women, 50% men uh, as engineers on the site. And as soon as you got to junior, the first management level there was only 10% women left. 40% had gone. Now, the site leader was a man, so he said, well, you know, um, women want to have kids, so they put a nursery on the site, no impact. Oh, uh, uh, women get stressed, uh, let's put a, a yoga facility, no impact. Now, he'd worked with us, and at some point he realized, I'm a man trying to solve a problem about why women leave. I'm probably the wrong, not the right guy to be solving the problem. So he asked us what to do, and we said, Give us your 30 women from all across your management structure, and we will teach them this. Now, as we taught them this, they had a whole bunch of insights. One of the insights was they were more intelligent when it came to stress than the man. You know, if the job was crazy, the man would just get dead and keep doing it dead. The woman would go, this is not a way to live. And th they would leave. Um, there was more diligence, more um, ethic to do work for the women than the men. So when you work on a manufacturing facility, you come in, you have a plan for the day, but overnight something went wrong and your plan gets okay. blown up and no. you spend the whole day fixing the problem. And at five o'clock, you finally get back to your office and, and you look at your plan. Well, guess what the men would do? They'd go home, have a beer. Guess what the yeah. women would do? They'd work till nine o'clock and get the work done. So the women had a whole bunch of insights about, hey, the stress is coming from me, not from the outside. So rather than leave, I could figure out how to get over the stress. And then they, saw, they had this change of heart about whether they should stay at work or go home or not. And they realized they just had some thinking that they had to prove themselves, which is only made up in their head. 
And so anyway, so they, they got a lot from the program. And all we did was teach them the principles. We didn't tell them what to do. Now, we work with our clients long term. So after about 10 years, I call up the site manager and I say, you know, hey, what's what happened to those 30 women? 28 of them are still working at the site. Wow. <laughs> They've all moved up. Two left, one went to a competitor and is doing the same job somewhere else, and another one's doing something completely different. And I said, well, what's the, um, you know, they do a lot of uh, metrics on diversity, you know, they do surveys. Mm -hmm. What's happened to your diversity scores? They've gone way up. So Amazing. I called up one, one of the women and I said, what's happened with diversity? And they said, well, what happens now is whenever I see something that isn't correct, I just see that the person doing it is innocent because of their thinking. And I don't get upset because I've realized that when I get upset, I have no ability to change anything. And so I sit down with the person and find out why they did that. And I usually hear thinking, which exactly explains what they did. And then I get to talk to them about their thinking. I said, give me an example. She said, well, a year ago, I was in a leadership team meeting and one of my colleagues said an inappropriate joke that was rude and was, was derogatory to women. Everybody laughed. I didn't get upset. After the meeting, I said, can I speak to you? I said, that joke you said. He said, yeah, it was a great joke. She said, well, um, don't you have an 18-year-old daughter? Yeah, yeah, I do. Would you tell that joke to your daughter? Oh, of course not. I mean, that would be rude. So why is it okay to tell it, not to tell it to your daughter, but it's okay to tell it in front of me? And the guy looked at her and you could see him Collapse is yeah. connecting. <laughs> yeah. And he goes, Oh my God, you're right. I hadn't realized that guy became a massive advocate for diversity. Yeah. So these people who are at the, the front end edge of the problem had the insights they needed to change and to start changing the mindset and therefore changing the results. It's the same thing. I don't know if you know uh, Mara Gleason or Mark, yeah. she's, now called, uh, she's now married to Eric. Yeah. Um, awesome. So I think she, she also awesome. so she's maybe maybe changed her family name. They teach this understanding to kids in gangs in the poorest parts of Chicago. They don't teach them about racism. They don't teach them about violence. They just teach them the principles. And guess what these kids do? They start to see what they need to change. Wow. Beautiful. So the good thing about change is you just have to teach them that. Yeah. And then they'll start to see what they need to change in their thinking. And then the rest just follows through. Does this make sense? Do you, do Absolutely. You have it? Absolutely. It's wonderful. So, so it's, a, it's amazing what this, this understanding does, not only in the world of business, but beyond. Yeah. And that's, and, and that's, uh, that's what, what's, yeah. The problem is only, yeah, it is, Pretty hard. I think the issue is it, it is so in front of your nose that you tend to overlook it. Well, I, I think it's it's more innocent than that, Swear. We live in a world. What does the world keep telling us? That's it's outside in. It's outside in. Yeah. You know, stock market has gone down, investors are worried. Yeah. No. Some investors don't care because they're long term and it's what went down is going to go up. Yeah. Some are excited because when the market is volatile, there's an opportunity. And other people are imagining that they're poor and they're living in the park because they lost their home. Well, if the, in, the stock market could make you feel something, everybody would feel the same thing. So the world doesn't say the stock market went down and depending on your thinking, maybe you were worried. They don't say that. <laughs> and then the other reason we don't understand it and or see it is it's so immediate. I yeah. always give the example, you know, I'm it's a Friday night at home and it's 10 30 in the evening in Boston. And my son at the time was living in London, which is five hours ahead. So it's 3 30 in the morning in London and my phone rings and it's my son calling me. Do you want to guess how long it took for me to get anxious? Um two seconds. <laughs> quicker than quicker than that. <laughs> okay. <laughs> now you know, I don't have a very particularly fancy phone, but can phones make you anxious? 
Not really, but well, they shouldn't. Well, I, <laughs> I don't think. I mean, not maybe one day they'll be able to beam messages yeah. into your head. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but currently, it, it the only fact was it was ten thirty. The phone rang, and my son's name was on the screen. And I was I was troubled and worried like that. Mm. So it looks like I'm fine. My 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 son calls and I'm worried. So it's my son calling that makes me worried. It just looks like that. Mm -hmm. I tell people I forget what I teach all the time. <laughs> I just don't forget as much as I used to. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. You know, I got better statistics than I had yesterday. Better statistics than I had it. Yeah, yeah, that's true. Absolutely. Yeah, Roland. Oh. Go ahead. Nicole, can then. I go ahead as a woman? Yes, of course. <laughs> you really talk uh, about teaching the principles. It's not yeah, it's, something it's, which comes up to my mind like it's, um, it's not it's not the use the correct word. Okay, yeah. Because then it sounds so intellectually, so and really yeah. with a structure and something to do, something to learn, a kind of technique. So well, th there are things to learn and there are things to, to do which help people learn, but it's more we orient people and we have them look in a direction. And while they, it's like a, we, we say we're tour guides. You know, we take people to Paris and we help them see the part of Paris that they want to see. We didn't invent Paris. We don't teach them Paris. We help them get a realization about Paris. So yeah, there's there's a loose journey we take them through. So we have not a script, but we want that point, that point. We want to anchor you know, inside out pretty deeply. We want to anchor design for success pretty deeply. And then the rest comes from the group. You know, if they're having problems with relationships, we go to relationships. If they're there's a lot of egos in the room. I mean, surprisingly, business has a lot of egos in it. Who, who would have thought? <laughs> um, so we've so, but yeah, we don't teach. Yeah, I'm I'm so glad you you mentioned that, Nicole. It's it's not a um, we point and help people look, and then we keep them, you know, in the bus looking in the right direction. So if they want to go into the to the past, we say, you know, if they want to manage their thinking we go you know but that's about otherwise we just keep them there and um even people are not interested if they have enough preparation you can get them to look pretty deeply with without much work but thank you a great great correction um language it's not our friend huh <laughs> <laughs> i recently talked to someone who said before we had language, we understood each other much better. <laughs> <laughs> and he's he's been studying on that, and he's well, he seems to be quite knowledgeable about that. So it's yeah, he's probably he's probably right. Um, so Hank, what, you you had a question, Hank. What was it? Um, I wanted to ask you about the following. Uh, I think last session we had Ken uh, Manning, and I mentioned to him, and he, I asked him uh, about. The, the three points that you bring. Um, yeah. Mind works only one way. Uh, mind's designed for success. And the more deeply that you see that, the happier and successful you'll be. Yeah. And there is a third one that I keep forgetting. No, no, that's, a th no, that's a th the third point is the more deeply you see the first two, the more you have the ability and capacity to do anything you need and be happy and effective. That's yeah, the third so point. The third yeah. point is a derivative of the first two. Okay. I, and I asked him because I, it sounded, I had picked it up as beliefs. So I, it seemed like a good strategy or a good angle on business. And I, I asked him about it and he basically said, well, they're metaphors for the principles. And I, yeah. for me that there, there's a whole area that I've discovered or explored and, and that clicked. I was like, oh, you're talking about properties of a principle. And I got really excited about that because that means you're not talking about technique you're not talking about strategy you're not talking about angle or perspective you're actually talking about the nature of the principles which is yeah. kind of obvious because that's what you've been saying uh, i just hadn't heard it like that so that was like a big big light moment um that being said um uh 
I, I, in your talking to it like this, where you start with results and you work your way backwards. Yeah. So behaviors, feelings, and all the, all the way back content, programming, and principles. Principle. Yeah. Um, as I was looking at it, it sounds like you're meeting people where they're at and you're bringing them towards something. Um, but um, and this is new and I'm just like something, but the thing is that what you're doing here is you're basically, it seems like the, I'm just trying to understand what you're really doing yeah. um, in relation to the principles. Cause I mean, strategy and all that is fine, but I'm just genuinely interested. Like, okay, if something works, it has to be, has to do something with the principles. And as I look at it now, it seems like you're tracking the missing link. You're like, okay, we've got all these external factors like results, feelings, programming, yada, yada, yada. And then there's these three formless principles that are constant, unchanging, uh, neutral. There's got a whole list of properties. And then, but you cannot say that to people directly because it's like, well, yeah, okay, great. How does that help my problem? Mm -hmm. So it seems like you're tracking the missing link because you're helping people see, hey, you're thinking about this, but that's via this, this, and this, and this, these words, its origin or its connection is to principles. Is that is that roughly how you see it? Or I'd love to to hear more about how you, how you guys look at that. Well, um, we, we have this deep belief that, um, or this deep, knowing or realization that there's deep intelligence behind life. And we know that everybody is connected and part of that um, deep intelligence. And so really what we want to do is we want have to be we want people to see that. Because if they see that divine intelligence behind life, they're fine. Doesn't mean they're going to have everything they want. I mean the, the world isn't set up for our preferences. Um, you know, there's an in interesting uh, expression, you know, man plans and God laughs, you know. Um, so we just want people to, to see the divine nature of life. Now, that's all Sid wanted. And in the beginning, when Sid would speak to us, there were no principles. The principles were set up as a bridge to point towards the divine nature of life. So we just have found ways to point to the principles that then point to the divine nature of life. And what we do is we trust that people are going to learn what they need to learn. So we go into a company and, you know, I give you a specific example. Um, a leader, I get a message that a leader wants to talk to me because he needs a new strategy for his business. So I don't really do strategy work, but I know that if you get people quiet, they'll figure out their best strategy. So I meet with him and, you know, what do you want to do? Well, you know, I run an engineering department and with AI and big data in, within 10 years, engineering is going to be completely different. So I need a new strategy. And so I'm thinking that makes complete sense. You know, the world's changing. He needs a strategy. And then I say, well, what helped you need? He said, well, my team's a bit green. I said, what do you mean green? He says, well, they don't show up on time. I only have one team meeting a month and some of them miss it. It's mandatory, but they miss it. And when they show up, they're this, they don't pay attention. They forget what we agree. You know, he and she have the same problem, but they don't talk. They both invent the solution in parallel. So they're just a bit green. And so they need some help designing the strategy. And I'm listening to him and the thought comes into my mind. If they're that disorganized, how good a strategy are they going to come up with? I mean, you wouldn't get a drunk electrician to wire your house, or you wouldn't get a, a depressed builder to, to a depressed architect to design a building. You know, you wouldn't. So I said, um, how good a strategy are they going to do if they're all over the place? And he looks at me and goes, you're right. I never thought about that. And I said, well, when you say they're green, I mean, are they what, 20s, 30s? He said, oh, no, they're 40s, 50s. And I'm thinking... 40s, 50s, that's, I mean, these people have worked for a while. How come they're green? And also the behavior isn't 
sensible that he's describing for a leadership team of, a, I mean, they've got 6,000 people in engineering. This is a big company. So I get curious. So I ask more questions. I said, well, what is the number one thing you guys are all working on? He says, we're growing so fast. We're hiring 600 people a year. Now, if you hire 600 people, how many people do you need to interview? 3,000, right? Let's say 3,000. How does 6,000 people interview 3,000 people? We're not all 6,000 are doing the interviewing because some of them are low-level people. So I said, how are you getting it done? He said, it's a nightmare. My people are so busy. They've got so much to do. It's like really hard for them. And I realized why he's calling them green. They're not green. They're overwhelmed. They're trying to work on something and keep their day job going. And it's crazy. I realized if they could all settle down, they'd have an insight about how to keep the work going and how to do the recruitment in a better way. I know it. So at that point, I realized learning about the principles will help them. But until then, I'm not selling anything. I'm not pushing anything. I'm just curious. And sometimes I hear that what they need is not me. And then I tell them, I think you need this. Now, once I see that learning this could be a benefit, then it's all a question of how you engage with them. What are they interested in? What do they know? What I explained earlier. But then you have, at some point, they agree to hire you. Then how do you teach people? Or how do you have them learn? How do you have them see this? Well, we found going straight for the principles was too abstract for people. So we came up with our reformulated version. Inside out, designed for success. The more you see those, the more you'll be fine. So what we, all we're doing, and Sid recommended this, is we're finding a way to talk to people in a way that makes sense to them. So it's, it's interesting you say that we're tracking the missing link, but because by the way, I never show this to my clients. I mean, unless they say we want a change program, in which case I say, what result do you want? And then they tell me the result. I then find out all the things I just asked you. And then I say, well, there's something I need to, to that you could learn that would help this. And I don't fill this in because I don't want them to get intellectual about it. I'm just using this to explain to, to, to you guys how change actually looks different if you understand it. And if someone comes to me with a specific question on change, I might draw this, but I don't, we, we go here and here. And then it's interesting how you said this tracks the missing link. I didn't, I never realized that. It does, absolutely. It's a very, listen, Sid, what Sid said was very simple. And our job is to find a simpler way to point people to it. And then the, the last thing to add is the world of business is fabulous because it trains you very well. You know, if, if you're a, um, psychologically unwell, you're committed to seeing your therapist, you'll listen to everything the therapist says mostly. The world of business is not interested. So unless you're relevant, they, they throw you out. So we got thrown out of a lot of meetings. Mm -hmm. Or we'd run a program and we'd do follow-up and the person would say, great program. I, I learned I must listen to my wife more. And I'm thinking four days and that's all you got. And then I realized the story I told to make the point about thought had been so rich on the, the wife listening thing that they thought that that was the point of the. So we realized we needed to clean up our stories and clean up our examples and be clear about our points. So it was fabulous. They trained us because they wouldn't put up with stuff that didn't make sense. So what, what we came up with was being shaped by the world of business. I mean, we used to give out the missing link and people would look at it and go, what am I supposed to do with that? You know, one guy would say, oh, I, I go to church. This really helps me out. But everybody else would be, thank you. What do I do with this? So that's why we started to formulate the words we use because we ha you have to get something to, for people to start playing with. Now, did, did I answer your question, Hank? Did I, or did I muck around around and not really hit the point? I, I think it, I think that's a yes. I think, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I'm just, I'm just, uh, because I asked a really open question and I'm just really open to like, what comes back? How do you see it? How does it play around? And then who knows? It's cool. Yeah. Yeah. You just sit there with an understanding and you see what makes sense. And, 
we've continued to innovate. And so now when we run the run our programs, we, I mean, we used to do a whole piece on the principles. We don't do that anymore. We do 15 minutes on the principles. And then we say, get into small groups. And you know that thing, mind, that we just touched on lightly? Get into a group and talk about it, what it means for you. Now, they know, they've, got, they've had nothing other than a few moments on what it might be. And so they, they splash around. And it's amazing what they come back with. Well, is this soul? Is this love? Is it the force behind the universe? So we don't, we used to do whole pieces on thought and whole pieces on mind and whole pieces on conscious. We don't do that anymore. We let them see what it what what comes up for them when you give them the very, very smallest explanation. It's amazing what they came up, come up with. So they they can learn for themselves. You just have to keep pointing them in a direction. So our teaching has got a lot simpler. Our, 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 our style of, of explaining and helping people see stuff has got a lot simpler. Less is more. Yeah. And trust that the wisdom behind life will help them see what they need to see. You don't, you don't have to. You don't have to design Paris. Paris already exists. You just have to have a minimal knowledge of Paris, literally a minimal knowledge. And then you explore Paris with them when they ask a question you don't know. At some point, did you ever write the that? Because you're on the board, you have the what, the why, the how. But there's always also the that. I'm what not being mean? smart here. I'm just being curious. I, no, I what do you mean the that? What what you mean by the that? So what comes to mind is Sid would talk about. It doesn't matter what you think. It's that you think, which is yeah. a you had a point on that. And I was just curious if you. Well, that's in that's in the how. Okay, got it. So everybody wants to talk about. The content and we say sorry it's, you know we could spend days in a program talking about the content it's that you think that matters not what you think and actually thought we tell people is a process it's not the what you think it's not the content it's a it's the process that it's the power that generates that creates experience you just need to know that there is a process that creates experience and Sid called it thought, which is you know, a confusing word. So yeah, we cover all, all the things that Sid says we talk about, you know, cool. yeah. in a way that's relevant for the people in front of us, including changing the language because it makes more sense for them to call it something different. Thank you. It's been enlightening. It's been really fun. Thank you so much. Well, my, my pleasure. As you can tell, I love to hang out and chat about this stuff so anyone else who wants to ask a question yeah natalie you haven't asked any questions uh no i'm very um i'm happy to hear the simplicity of, of the way you you brought it and i loved also the idea that you're using the wisdom and that's already in the group and and that it that it can show up from there that in fact we don't have to do anything <laughs> when we're training or um, we just have to fa facilitate the, the the process in 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 a way. It's amazing. People say things in the program that are profoundly true that we never told them. I was in a program last week. Last week, I, oh, I can't remember in in Belgium, and one lady was deeply touched, and she put a post on on uh, on LinkedIn, and she said, "You know what? Whenever I have a problem," and she basically in her own words, recreated the Krishnamurti quote. Krishnamurti has got this beautiful quote where he says, you know, um, uh, basically, the minute you see, the minute you, you step back from the problem, the minute you stop thinking hard about the problem, the problem unfolds and reveals itself. And so therefore, the way to solve any problem is to have a quiet mind. That's basically what he says. Well, she said exactly that. And that was her realization. So how can it come a, a Belgian woman? She was Flemish, so maybe that helped. A Flemish Belgian <laughs> woman in a three-day program have an insight that exactly corresponds to what Krishnamurti said. It says everybody has everything they need in them. Mm -hmm. 
Our job is to help tease it to the surface. Yeah. And the simpler you are, and the less you give them things to bite on. So, for example, we, we don't teach state of mind anymore. We, years ago, we used to teach state of mind. Well, guess what happens when you teach or share state of mind? People get interested in their state of mind. And they then think a lot. So we say, look, your experience is not the point here. We don't care about your experience. I mean, we do care, but you know, we're not going to talk about your experience. It's irrelevant. We're interested in how experience gets created. That's what we're inter interested in. So yeah, simple, 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 simple. Yeah, and, and the funny thing is, when you do this, sometimes just fate ha falls into your into your lap, or more, more or less. It's 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 funny. Yes, not I fate. Know. It's not fate, sphere. No, you're right. You're right. Yeah, <laughs> you're right. Sorry. Yeah, I, I couldn't find a, a proper word at that moment. <laughs> But yesterday my son was here and he's going, he's flying to Abu Dhabi, uh, no, to Dubai tomorrow, uh, the next week, next week. And um, for some reason, this morning, I decided to send him some information on what you need in, in, in uh, uh, documents to get into the, the, Dubai. And one of the lines I had overlooked and I had seen was that your passport shouldn't be all, uh, uh, should, should be at least six months valid for the next the next six months. So it should yeah. be valid for six. And tonight I got a call from him. He was driving home. He's, he gave me a call. He said, yeah, it's good you send me that. I said, why? Well, I just found out that my passport is only valid for five months. And I need to, I need to change that quickly. <laughs> and I can't, can I have already arranged it. But it's, it's amazing how this, this happens. I wasn't intending to really well but some in some way it's amazing yeah life is perfectly designed yeah we just have an ego with which has preferences mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah and um i can i don't have enough fingers to count all the times when things didn't go the way i wanted and then afterwards i realized it was a good thing it didn't go the way i wanted yeah, absolutely. So even with all, all the the craziness going on, and I've had a, a, three weeks now with all sorts of things going on in my personal life, people around me, death, uh, disease, you know. Mm. Ill Sorry, Artem. Well, it's, it's, thank you, Sphere, but it's life. Yeah, I know, but still. But I, I, but I see the wisdom in it all. Mm. You know, we just have this attachment to the human form, you know. Yeah. We, uh, mm -hmm. You know, I, I, I often like to quote uh, Pierre uh, Taillard de Chardin. He was a French Jesuit priest. Yeah. In the 1800s, he died, I think, 1950, 53, something like that. And again, I'll, I'll, I'm, I'm not good at quoting people exactly, but he basically said, we're spiritual beings trying to have a human life, thinking that it's the other way around. Yeah. It's a spiritual life. It's not a human life. And this stuff that's going to happen that we that comes to us to learn, and we either learn it or not. But yeah. we don't choose when it comes, and we don't choose what it is. Mm. But if you see that life is divine, you see that there's intelligence running life. Mm. Well, then you can at least orient yourself towards seeing the intelligence. Yeah. I was listening to uh, Don Hoffman and Rupert Spira having a discussion earlier this, today. And they were talking about um, mind, more or less, in, in their way. Um, they call it oneness, which is fine, it's the yeah. same. And they said, well, we will never be able to describe, because they can calculate with that part of it, at least. <laughs> but we will never be able to describe that. There's, there's no way, because it is so complex that at the moment we start to try to complex it's just the, phys the, the the mathematics will just go go well, fall fall out. But it's there. We know it's there. Yeah. And it's if uh, you what? if you if you orient yourself towards it. Yeah. Absolutely. I know many many people who don't know to look, and so they don't think there's anything there. And it's like the you know the guy who's um the, it's a joke you know where a guy is going for a job interview and he gets to the building 15 minutes before his his job interview and he can't find a parking space so it's 15 minutes and it's a, it's a great job and so he 
stops the car, you know, double parked, and he says, um, hey, God, it's me, Bill. Yeah, I know we haven't spoken in a while. Um, sorry, uh, you know, listen, this job is, is uh, this job is fabulous. Could you, could you get me a parking space, you know? Nothing happened. He's driving around, 10 minutes to go. He stops the car again and says, look, God, it's, it's Bill again. Look, first of all, I don't speak to you in years. And then the first time I call you up, I say, give me this. And I don't offer you anything in return. I mean, that's how rude of me. Look, I apologize. I apologize. Look, if I can get that parking space, I'll go to mass this Sunday. Nothing happens. He's driving around, driving around. And it's five minutes now before he has to be in the building. And he stops the car and he says, look, God, it's Bill again. Now, first of all, I don't speak to you in years. Then I call you up and without hello, anything, I ask you to give me something. And then... I realize I'm not very generous. And so I offer you one mass. I mean, this is the job of a lifetime. And I've offered you only one. I mean, I'm so sorry. Listen, if I get this parking space, I'll go to church for a year. And just as he says that, the car in front of him pulls away and he has a parking space. He says, <laughs> it's okay, God. I, got, I fixed the problem. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah. You know, what is it, what is it, um, uh, Einstein said, you know, we, life is a miracle and we live, we live like it isn't. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot we just of... want people to see the divine nature of life and it's, it's all fine, you know. Yeah. yeah. And also Einstein said something like, um, I'm, I'm not on the book quoting as well, but it's, it's a, said something that, we have a divine mind and a a, a, um, um, a, a a rational rational mind, which 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 we made the master, <laughs> which is not a, not an, an excellent uh, uh, quote, but it's, it, it is it is mixed with yeah. something else. But one so, is the master, one is the servant, and we've, yeah, forgotten, absolutely. we've yeah. forgotten which is which. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So so Nicole, back to your point on teaching. We're just reminding people, actually. And what is so interesting, I'm, I'm doing a an, uh, an leadership program and we called it Leading from a Fresh Mind. And we actually kind of started by, by telling them that it's all magical. And it was a three-day retreat. And the leaders were also like, oh, wow. So what's, what comes up to my mind is it's also important, yeah, just being there. My my words are different than yours, and my uh, and I think that's also if it's all there, if it's all one, maybe it doesn't matter at all if we start with the problem uh, or just share about wow, let's let's go together to the fresh mind where it all comes from and where it's it has no form and yeah, so now yeah. yeah. Yeah, Sid, Sid would say this. He said, don't listen to my words. Find your own way. Say it yourself. I mean, we took a very specific orientation to go after very big companies to impact as many people as possible mm -hmm. and companies that are doing good in the world. Well, I was speaking to a, a dear friend the other day, and she's teaching whoever shows up. And I said, well, what's that strategy? She said, well, I, I figure the divine is going to send me who I need to speak to. And who knows who they will speak to. And so yeah. I don't have to be know. as scientific as you, Robin, of targeting. I got it completely. That's what's so good about this. We're pointing to a undescribable truth, an invisible truth. And there's a thousand ways to point to it. It's universal. It's universal. Yeah. I mean... You go back to Marcus Aurelius, Confucius, the Catholic Church. I mean, everybody's been pointing at it. Yeah, Sid's gift was he found a simple way to point to it. Because all the other ways are really complicated. But it doesn't mean we have to be complicated. So, you know, you have to be intelligent. So, for example, and this is not a rule, but it seems to, to apply. Whenever we work with French people, and the French educational system is very Cartesian. You know what Cartesian is? Yeah. Very logic, A to B to C, you know, very complex. They, they overanalyze everything. 
Well, when we start talking to them about the principles, we never start with thought because they can argue till the end of time about thought and reality. Yes, but, yes, but, yes, but. Guess what we start with? Mind. Because like you just explained, Nicole, how do you, you can't argue about it. What's running your, 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 your heart? Well, electrical signals from the brain. Well, what's causing that to happen? The brain. Well, what's causing the brain to do that? Uh, by biology. Well, what's causing your biology to do that? Uh, uh, I don't know. What's a fly? Something like that. <laughs> so it causes them to then have to look. What could it be? And when they look, they see something. So, yes, you have to make adjustments. There's some skill and art depending who you're working with. I mean, mm. the first program I ever run for a team, we did it in a conference room on the floor where everybody worked. And it was a glass conference room. So, of course... People were pulled out all the time, you know, people would wait by way. Or can I ask Bill a question? So, you know, it was like we couldn't keep people in the room long enough to hear anything we had to say. So, yeah, the principles are still true, but unless people are paying attention, it doesn't matter. So now we don't do programs in people's offices. So a lot of common sense things you can do around it, but how they see it, how to language it. A thousand ways, at least. Beautiful. Has this been helpful for? for, for it's an, it's it's been amazing. Thank you very much. Wonderful. Yes, really great. Well, anytime I can be of help, please don't hesitate to. It's it's been wonderful, uh, Robin, and it's I, I think it's been enlightening for all of us. Um, so it's it's wonderful. And, and thank you so much for, for being here, spending your time in, with us. Pleasure. And um, well, I'll, I'll, I'll make sure you get the copy of the of the video. So you can use it if you want to. Well, oh, thank you. Thank you. And as they, as they say, tot ziens. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you well and tot ziens. Real pleasure. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Thank you, Robin. Bye. <laughs>